The idea of a reaction quotient looks so similar to the equilibrium constants. It has this same sort of a definition. I mean, look at this. It's the concentrations just in the same way that we were talking about equilibrium constants. But there is a difference, and that is that reaction quotients can be measured at any point during the reaction. Equilibrium constants are when everything has settled out and stable, it's in an equilibrium, the numbers are not changing anymore. Q is a dynamic situation and K is the equilibrium after sufficient time has elapsed to make everything so that it's done reacting. So when we are looking at a reaction quotient, it's this numerical value of that mass action expression. The numbers all have to be taken at the same time. It can also be done as a K sub P and use pressures if everything is a gas. And Q will attempt to make itself the same number as K. We can use it to see how close we are to being done, for example or we can use it to see which direction this mixture is going to go. So here is an example. If we have a formula where the water and the carbon monoxide are combining to form hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide, if we were in a situation where they were already at equilibrium, there would be no change in the concentrations. There's no net change. Q is the same as K. But that's not always true. Maybe we started by dumping into the reaction vessel just water and carbon monoxide. If we did that, then automatically Q would be less than K. Why? Because we're forming this by taking the products over the reactants and the products would be at zero. So of course Q would be zero. It would start at zero and start forming a number that is getting closer and closer to K. So if we're in the situation where we have many more reactants than products, it's going to head towards the product side. On the other hand, since this is an equilibrium, we could have a, a vessel in which we had simply put in carbon dioxide and hydrogen gas. Well, that is subject to this equilibrium, so some of it is going to go back this way. And that is a case where Q is going to be huge and K is still what K was. K, you see, K has the same value anywhere here. So the Q is going to say, all right, we need to start moving this the other direction. It needs to go that way because I actually have too much product. I'm above the number that I should be for K. There's a very lovely table. I like to write this in alphabetical order. This is not alphabetical order. If I write it in alphabetical order and I say that K is greater than Q, that's this first one, then it is automatically telling me by this arrow that it's going to go to the right, the forward direction. Just for a mnemonic, I like to write them in alphabetical order and then see what the values are and see whether it's true that K is greater than Q or K is equal to Q, in which case it's already in equilibrium and everything's happy. Or if K is less than Q, then I know it's going to have to go this direction. This is simply saying that there are too many products and we're going to have to break some of them back up into the original reactants. This one is saying there are not very many products compared to what there should be, and therefore we're going to make more products. This is just a note because to me it's just so much easier to write it this way, and then I know which direction the arrow is pointing, and then I know that the reaction is going to proceed to the right. Reaction goes to the left. Here is a reaction. Oh, that's one of our old friends, right? We've seen this reaction before. They're doing it at a different temperature, so we ended up with a different value for K sub C. And I have a mixture that I've thrown into a container. I know that the values of uh, the concentration of nitrogen dioxide and dinitrogen tetraoxide. Is it in equilibrium? And if not, which direction is it going to go? So I know that I am going to 
use this to compare K and Q. Q is going to be the concentration of the dinitrogen tetraoxide over the concentration of the nitrogen dioxide squared. I will put the numbers in that they gave me. So this one was the 0.0014. This was the 0 0.025, but it has to be squared. I end up getting 2.24. So that's my value of Q. They told me that K was 4.7. That means the arrow is going that way. K is bigger than Q, so it is going to proceed to the right. Another way of saying that is it favors products. You'll see different wording that people have used, but the current concentrations favor the products that we are going to make more of the dinitrogen tetraoxide and we're going to reduce the amount of nitrogen dioxide that we have.